What's up guys, this is Jahangir from Emporium, and today we're going to be talking about a quick conceptual topic that you definitely need to know, and this is diprotic and polyprotic acids. So diprotic, di meaning two, poly meaning many, and I'm sure you guys already know that from either biology or from past chemistry knowledge, like polyprotic, polyprotic ions. So Diprotic and polyprotic acids, you're going to have more diprotic, you're going to have two hydrogens, polyprotic, you're going to have more than two hydrogens. So it's something like if we had H2SO4 or H2C2O4 or H2SO3. So these are are sort of diprotic polyprotic acids because we have multiple multiples of these hydrogens and these are actually your polyatomic ions so that's why they're also polyprotic acids because they have that polyatomic ion over here so4 i believe that's two minus so3 uh maybe there's a charge on that now one of the biggest characteristics that differentiates diprotic from polyprotic acids is that diprotic acids can donate more than two hydrogens so a monoprotic acid or just our sort of HCl or HI, those can only donate one hydrogen. These can donate two hydrogens. So this H2SO4 can just turn into SO4, uh, two minus, I believe, but that's pretty much the basis of our diprotic and polyprotic acids. Now there's a couple conceptual things that you really need to know. So let me actually change the color over here. And one of the things you need to know is that the first ionization constant ionization constant constant or our ka and i'll denote that as one this will be higher uh let me actually let me actually move this over here and put a um sign over here so this first ionization constant will be higher than our second ionization constant so just because i'm i'm pretty lazy i'll just put ka2 denoting our second ionization constant now you might be wondering well why is the first ionization constant higher than our second ionization constant and it's something like uh if we have h2 let me write two co3 that's a weak acid right there because of our uh double arrows so hydrogen plus HCO3 minus. So this is basically saying that this first ionization constant of H2CO3 will be larger than our second ionization constant if we're trying to ionize this guy over here. The reason why is because we have to understand that ionization constant is the ability to basically break those hydrogens from this molecule. So it's basically the ability for a Ka to be a whatever kind of acid. If we have a high Ka, that means we have a strong acid, which means it can ionize easier. So if we have a high ionization constant, a higher Ka, that means we have a stronger acid. And that means that that acid can ionize easily. It can break up its bonds or it can break up that relationship much easier. And this makes sense because if we lose a hydrogen over here, then it's going to be pretty easy to lose a hydrogen, especially if we have an electronegative um, element, then that's going to pull the electron density towards itself, hogging all of the attention and the hydrogen will be left as a third wheel. So it's easier to remove this first hydrogen from a neutral species. Now, if we have a negative one over here, like HCO3 minus, well, it's going to be a little bit harder. It's going to be harder to remove that hydrogen, especially since we are in a charged state. We are in a negative state, so it's going to be harder for us to pull away that hydrogen, which is why our Ka of the second one over here, that second ionization constant will be lower than the first one, because it's going to be harder to pull that hydrogen away from this charged species. Now, let's say, for example, and if we keep on going with this, HCO3 minus, double bars over here, and hydrogen plus CO3 minus. Now this ionization constant is gonna be higher than this one. And uh, we actually have to put a negative two charge. So the higher our charge gets, going to the negative side, the higher the charge gets, the harder it is, the uh, lower our ionization constant will be. Because like we said, 
it is hard to pull a hydrogen from a charged species. But if you increase that charge, it becomes even harder. Because although over here, it was easy to pull that hydrogen, this CO3 still wants that hydrogen, it still likes having that hydrogen around. So it's going to be hard to ionize or break up that bond again. So it gets increasingly harder to ionize that acid going from when you have this diprotic acid all the way down. And this results in a lower and lower ionization constant, which is why the first ionization constant will always be higher than the last ionization constant. This indicates that at first we would have a stronger acid because it's pretty much able to give away that hydrogen, it pretty much agrees that fine, I'll give away this hydrogen. And that's it. But if you keep pressuring it, it's going to be more resistant, it is not going to be as tolerable. And it's going to tell the sort of water, hey, I want this hydrogen, don't take it away from me. But the water needs a higher sort of, I guess you could say energy, that's not really how it works. But it's going to be harder for that water to pull that hydrogen away, or it's going to be harder for this molecule over here that HCO3 to lose that hydrogen. So main point you need to know is that it is easier to pull hydrogen from a neutral state. And our ionization constant is going to be higher compared to if you're trying to break it apart from a charged species from this negative species over here. And when you get down and down, you're gonna have a lower ionization constant. So that's pretty much the conceptual part of ionization constants, where you really have to and you really have to nail this down in your brain, where if you have a higher Ka, that's a stronger acid, it ionizes easier. If you have a lower Ka, you have a weaker acid, because it won't ionize fully, it won't let go of that hydrogen. And that's what makes it a weak acid. So hopefully you learned something. And as always, a Pomodoro day will make you a doctor someday. I'll see you guys in the next one.